Hi everyone. In uh, today's video, I'm going to take up another important oral exam question. And the question is, how does the International Maritime Organization or the IMO ensure the wide acceptance of its conventions? So for example, if a convention like Maritime Libra Convention or the STCW Convention come into force, how does IMO ensure that it is widely accepted or ratified or it can come into force in maximum number of countries because if there is no wide acceptance of these conventions then shipping companies and and states uh, or maritime nations can get away by not complying with these conventions which are put into effect or put into force for the benefit of the maritime of the seafaring community. So when IMO introduces a convention, they have to make sure that it is widely accepted by all nations. So of course before any convention comes into force, it is discussed for a length of time uh, among the member states. There are more than 160 odd member states of the IMO, uh, which pretty much covers most of the uh, countries in the world and only then it comes into force. But still, due to bureaucracy, due to loopholes, or due to a certain window period provided, sometimes conventions take time to come into force. Not all conventions have been accepted by all countries in the world. And there could be various reasons for that. But how does IMO ensure that these conventions are widely accepted? So this is based on the no more favorable treatment principle. So sometimes uh, students are also asked about this principle directly that what is the meaning of no more favorable treatment. Let me, that means, let me give you an example. This means that uh, if, a, if a country like the United States of America, which has not ratified the Maytime Labor Convention, has ships registered in America and these ships visit Australia, which has ratified the Maytime Labor Convention way back in 2011. Now, even today, in 2022, America or the United States of America have not ratified the Maritime Labor Convention. Now, the ships registered in America, when they visit countries like Australia or India, countries that have ratified the Maritime Labor Convention, the ships will still have to comply with the requirements of the Maritime Labor Convention, although those ships have been registered in countries that have not ratified the convention. This doesn't give them any kind of a benefit so there is no more favorable treatment. No favorable treatment is given to these ships just because they have been registered in a country which has not ratified a convention. So when they go to Australia, they would have to comply with all the requirements of the Maritime Labor Convention, although the country in which the ship is registered has not ratified the convention. So this makes it difficult for non-complying countries to visit the countries which have ratified the convention. So this applies to all the conventions of the IMO. So if a non-compliant country goes to a country which has complied with a certain convention, they would still have to demonstrate compliance. And what makes it harder is that if a ship which is coming from a non-compliant country or which has been registered in a non-compliant country comes into the port of a country which has complied with or ratified the convention, these ships are inspected even more strictly. You will have port state control visiting these ships and strictly inspecting these ships for the compliance of these conventions, which makes it hard for the master and the seafarers also. So in order to be able to trade in these countries, non-compliant countries are also being indirectly pressurized to comply with the provisions of this convention. So this is the no more favorable treatment principle based on which the IMO ensures the wide acceptance of its conventions. The more the countries ratify or recognize it or submit paperwork for ratifying of these conventions, the more widely accepted it is, the easier it will become for the shipping companies to trade in these countries as well. I hope this clarifies things. In my next video, I'll take up another question, an important question, uh, so that I can explain it simply to you with an example so that you can do the same when you go for oral examination.
बाय फॉर नाउ